Welcome back guys. So here I've already drawn the client server model. Just look at it and have a basic understanding of what it is. So on the server side we have the following functions. Socket, bind, listen, accept. So these four functions are the starting of the connection. So socket function creates a socket, then we have bind, then we have listen function which is listening to any request from a client and then accept function accepts the request from the client on the client side there is no bind and listen function those are only the job of the server so on the client side also we are creating the socket obviously the socket port number needs to be the same i had already gone through this so remember that the socket port number should be need to be needs to be the same socket type needs to be the same so after that uh, bind and listen is not there we have a connection function which requests a connection to the server and accept function of the server accepts it and then we have read and write so whenever there is a read on a server side there has to be a corresponding write and whenever there is a write on the server side there has to be a corresponding read on the client side and alas after our chatting is completed we need to close both server and client so if the server is closed the client will be automatically closed well it is not vice versa if the client is closed the server remains on because server may be handling many clients but if the server goes down all the clients go down so let's have a look at the functions which are written over here and we will be using them so one by one we will have a look at all of these functions and the understanding of these functions is very very important in writing our code so and remember that this all functions are because of two files which we have included number one is types.h and the other one is socket.h okay so let's go and look what is socket doing in our code so yes what does the socket function do is this int socket socket is our variable so this tells us that socket function is returning something and that something is the file descriptor which is in the integer format so socket has three arguments so the first argument specifies the communication domain second argument specifies the communication type and third argument specifies the protocol so the first argument specifies the address family in our case the address family which we will be using is af underscore inet which belongs to ipv4 protocol which is internet protocol version 4 so the second type mainly contains of two different types uh, actually it contains of many types but the important ones are only two so what we would be using is soc underscore stream which signifies that we are using the TCP protocol we want to send our data in a stream and the other one is soc underscore dcrom which signifies we are going to use the UDP user tetagram protocol in our case we are using this because we are going for the transmission control protocol so these are the two important types of this it contains many other types you can google it if you want to and the third one into protocol we will here just write zero because zero is the default for the tcp protocol so this is the socket function now let's go ahead and find out what does the bind function do so this is a bind function so what actually bind does is when a socket is created with our socket function it exists in a namespace my namespace here i mean in an address family but has no address assigned to it bind assigns the address specified by agdr which is a second parameter to the socket referred by the file descriptor socfd so the first parameter socfd is provided by our previous function is returned by it it is returned by the socket function and addr len which is the length of addr 
specifies the size in byte of the address structure pointed by ADDR. So now let's look at the structure of the ADDR. So this is our structure. So we have S A family and S A data whose size is 14 characters. The only purpose of this structure is to cast the structure pointer passed in ADTR to avoid compiler warnings. Now, this function also returns something. So it returns a zero if the function execution is a success and minus one if it is a failure. So this lets us know whether the bind function has actually been executed or it has failed. So this is all about bind function. Let's go and look what the lesson is doing over there. So listen contains two parameters. The first one is socfd, which is again the file descriptor provided by socket function and other one is int backlog. I will come to the second parameter in a minute, but just understand what does the listen function do? As the name suggests, it listens for the connection on a socket. It marks the socket referred by socfd file descriptor as a passive socket, that is, as a socket that will be used for accepting incoming connections requested using accept. Now the second parameter. The second parameter is the number of connections a system can handle at a single time. So here we provide, suppose if we provide here four, then the first connection request would be accepted. Pretty cool, we can handle that. The second connection request would be accepted. The third one would be accepted. The fourth one would be accepted. And when the fifth client or the fifth connection request is there, the listen socket will say, hey, no, our system cannot handle this much connections. We can handle only four connections at a time. So, well, we reject the fifth connection. So that is what listen does. Pretty cool. Now we move on to our accept function. So accept function also returns a file descriptor. We store that file descriptor in a variable new sock FT. New sock FT is also of the type int. So why we require the new sock FT? Because whatever communication is going to take place after that, we are going to use the new SOC FT file descriptor. All the communications will be taken on new SOC FT file descriptor. So the three parameters of accept is SOC FT, like all other functions till now we have used. It describes the socket file descriptor. Next is the structure SOC ATTR. We have also gone through this. And the third parameter is the length of it. So we have also gone to this third parameter. So nothing new in accept, just that it, it waits for the connection function so that whenever the connection function is generated from the client side, the accept function responds to it by if the function is successful in executing whatever it wants to, then we will get a new socket file descriptor on which we would be doing our further communication. So that was it about accept. Let's go ahead and look about the corresponding connection function over here. So this is our connect function. So the connect function is pretty similar to our accept function. The arguments are also similar. The only thing is that it does not written an argument like the bind and listen function it returns zero if it is a success or minus one if it is a failure if the connection does fails it will return minus one and zero if it is a success now the main function is read and write because of whom we could do a chatting okay let's go ahead so these are our read 
and write functions. So these functions contains, sorry for that, this functions contains three arguments, new sock ft, buffer and buffer size. So what is buffer? Buffer is the string which we are going to pass. So our message would be here in buffer and buffer size is the string size. So our message cannot be greater than the string size. Similarly for int write, we use the new sock ft as the file descriptor which we get or when our connection is accepted and buffer size is the string size. So these two functions, because of this, we can communicate with each other. There are other functions uh, using which also we can communicate. They are send and receive. Mm -hmm. But the fact that we don't use send and receive is read and write are pretty simple. Send and receive contains one more argument which is a flag argument and we don't require it here right now. So we will use read and write. And the last function close just closes the connections. So this is all about the client server model and all the functions which we are going to use in our program. So this is it guys. This is all about all I needed to tell to you. Now we are all ready to code our first program. In our next tutorial, see you there. We are starting our code. So JJ here bids you a goodbye. Like, share and subscribe. Thank you guys.